rejoicing during the end times. To rejoice is to feel or express hope, love, joy, or peace, and often this occurs on a special occasion. The end times is the period leading up to a judgment. It is believed that we have been in the last of the church age since Jesus' resurrection, and darkness will cover the sky on judgment day. Though the Bible recorded Jesus' call from God to bring a righteous judgment upon the people, infants are exempt from penalties of sin. They cannot seek the kingdom of God, ask Jesus to come into their heart, or ask forgiveness of sin. Their iniquities cannot be proven during those stages, and they are supposed to be saved from the wrath of God. They too will need the continual renewal of flesh but they have natural innocence. Everyone else will have to reprove their sins before the judgment. When hope and peace exist in your life you can rejoice and feel God's glory. Songs of melody come to mind when you are standing in the easy yoke with Christ. Life is easy, due to making righteous choices of following through with God's systematic plan. Webs of destruction don't hinder prayers, and the calm peace about yourself helps others around achieve success and fulfill destinies. The kids' purest intentions aren't distorted with vainness. Because parents wouldn't have defiled their flesh with sexual desires, and they acknowledge saving their purest intent for a future spouse. So, they would be able to look forward to getting married in the future. The End Times Examples Example 1, Giovanni received an inheritance from his family business, Amy worked all her life to achieve success. Both married and had two girls, but both spent their extra money on alcohol and drugs now the girls won't have money for educational activities or fulfilling a future destiny. The result is Giovanni and Amy didn't stand steady in the easy yoke with Jesus Christ. Example 2, Genesis received an inheritance from his family business, Princess worked all her life to achieve success. Both married and had two sons, but both managed to spend their extra money toward the boys' educational activities and fulfilling a future destiny. The result is Genesis and Princess did stand steady in the easy yoke with Jesus Christ. During the end times, Giovanni and Amy didn't acknowledge a closer walk with God therefore, they won't acknowledge rejoicing with him either. Genesis and Princess did acknowledge a closer walk with God therefore, they will acknowledge rejoicing with him. The end times mean all parishes that didn't acknowledge a closer walk with God. Hosea 4 6. During the web of destruction. The yoke of life gets bitter and difficult without taking up the yoke of Jesus Christ. There isn't a melody in the heart because your purest intentions weren't saved. You don't have hope or peace, and corrupt melodies come to mind. When trials come your way, you acknowledge them as setbacks, and often be angry at God for the defilement of the flesh. This doesn't necessarily involve the vainness you saw growing up but does involve the vainness that often gets passed down from one generation to the next. While any of this can make someone feel angry and bitter. These are the emotions people use against you, to keep you defiling the flesh with sexual desires. When they too won't stand in the yoke with Jesus Christ. If you are on alcohol and drugs, you tend to go along with what they do or say. And once you are in a habit of making wrong choices, you might blame everyone and everything for what went wrong. Or you might express cowardice, evasive and indecisive emotions to avoid hearing others say, you have failed in life. Which can last an eternity, and this is why once you don't acknowledge standing in the yoke with Christ, alcohol and drugs can result in death. The Aftermath of Defilement Once you start defiling your kid's purest intent, others around who are defiled go out the way to also defile the kid's flesh. This leaves them open for more defilement, and they carry these heavy burdens throughout life. General reasons why some people can't keep employment or housing, and why playgirls feel justified in their wrong actions. Acknowledge the red flags of people who defile kids' purest intent, otherwise, they won't acknowledge defilement of any kind. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Mark 10:15. I believe Jesus didn't say this thinking, he would judge kids harshly, he said this with acknowledgement of the prior generation's parents who didn't take a closer walk. The closer walk means to believe in him, follow his guidance and change your evil and wickedness. Surely, you can't compare others' defilement during the end times by saying, oh well I didn't defile my flesh any worse than the last person. Any defilement will be judged. Parents who go to church and didn't take the closer walk, aren't able to rejoice during the end times and give God the glory of all things pure and righteous in their life. It is up to us as adults to change the cycle of abuse and vainness. Burdens of the world. In Matthew 11 28 30, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus was saying a lot of things here, let's take a closer look. He said he's meek and lowly in heart, this means an angel or godly nature, humble, patient, and untamed of the spirit. Also, he said his burden is light obviously, he was born to be a light of the world, and all his journeys brought about struggles to prove to non-believers back in the day. Also, he said his yoke is easy, 
the honor to be called to bring justice and peace to all nations was a gift from his founding fathers. This gave him confidence we as heavy laden and laborers can find rest in our souls through him, it proves his purest intentions of the heart. When he said, I will give you rest, he acknowledged no one other than him felt the full desire to become a strengthening foundation, where you can get rest without remaining heavy burden. This means he had a calm peace upon himself, to have the calm peace he gives to us. The first prayer I had, when I got saved was for peace to enter my life. I was heavy burdened from homelessness and had labored without rest for several years. There were tears for many years of heartache and pain, but today is a new day. God would, rather I reveal my glory than to remain in that old story of trial test. This is how the trial test story plays out in your life. It only takes a mere second to forget tangible hidden access the Father so gracefully wants you to have to the eternal life on earth, the paradise of happiness, joy, and peace. The journey through Jesus Christ is peaceful, he is forgiving and took compassion upon people throughout the journey to Galilee before his crucifixion. The people acknowledge God's glory through trial test stories the fastest are happy, and live a structured life. They are the individuals who walk in the yoke with Jesus because they stand steady in the easy yoke with him. Accepting his easy yoke means to lay aside your burdens, or take up God's ministry and make it one of your projects or both. Why you should not take the heavenly spirit of God for granted. When Jesus said, take up my yoke he acknowledged the people there would continually sin. Essentially, he didn't value taking their faith in him for granted, he saw sin in them while allowing them to reconsider their thoughts. Even though, reconsidering their thoughts involved correcting a lot of evil and wickedness. The Great Commission. Jesus said all powers were given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and, lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Amen. Matthew 28 19-20, Generally, this was after the resurrection, he said all authority had been given to him over earth and heaven. This is what launched the process of his last concerns, to reach lost individuals walking in darkness and dwelling in shadows of death. According to Matthew although he didn't say go make disciples of them, he does want them to follow and take up his yoke. Many religious fully believe you can have a relationship with the invisible father in heaven. I believe you honor the birth father here on earth, to honor and respect the relationship with the father in heaven. The yoke you have with the birth father here on earth relates to the yoke, that you will have with the father in heaven. The initial reason is the earliest you acknowledge a destiny through the birth father and father in heaven, the greater destiny can be. Example, Joe and Jane both have a birth father and mother, but Joe is closer to his birth father more than his birth mother. Joe's destiny includes impoliteness and no quality of health care, his destiny will reach the entire world on a greater scale. Joe's destiny requires self-employment with long-suffering through trial test, his destiny includes a resurrection. Jane is closer to her birth mother more than her birth father. Jane's destiny will reach a small group of people, her destiny includes impoliteness and great quality of health care. Jane's destiny requires employment with comforts, her destiny doesn't include a resurrection. Both have favorable destinies however, Joe's destiny will force him to acknowledge forgiveness, politeness, and overcoming trial tests, and Jane's destiny will force her to acknowledge the determination, hard work, and politeness. If both were closer to both parents, they would acknowledge determination, forgiveness, politeness, overcoming trial tests, and hard work naturally. Otherwise, both have to be taught these other abilities from a second person's account. And this is whether the second person or persons believe in God or not. If they aren't able to, they remain incarcerated by the unknown fears of having not embraced these other abilities in life. This is why it is best to embrace respect for the Father in heaven wholeheartedly, at least it can help change the unknown fears you face. Struggles vs. Tears of the world. To struggle is to contend with an adversary or opposing force. Tears are any bean like plant seeds that form into a harvest. Jesus talked about a parable in Matthew 13 24 30 where he refers to sowing a good seed as reflections of the kingdom of heaven. But he refers to the tears as negative seeds or weeds surrounding the harvest. In a church congregation, you have people who represent the fruit of seeds, and many of them struggle with faith in silence. Newcomers are people who represent the tears, they struggle with faith inside and outside the church. As long as people of the congregation and newcomers separate God's power from the devil's influence continually, either can become good seeds for a harvest. When you make unrighteous choices that lead to defilement, you often visualize God in the devil's reflection. Once you start making righteous choices that lead to undefilement, you acknowledge God's power through signs and wonders to be empowered. The devil reflection disappears for real faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost reflection becomes pure, not a reflection of the devil's man-made influences. And you don't allow the opposing force of struggles, hinder growth as good seeds for a harvest. Otherwise, bad fruit, seeds, or weeds can be bind or gathered into bundles to burn in a fire. 
Even though Jesus acknowledged tears needed to be thrown in a fire, he didn't acknowledge a need for mercy from the wrath of judgment on his life, when he stated this parable. Neither do people of a congregation or newcomers acknowledge the wrath of judgment on their life when determining who ought to be cast in a fire for defilement. Many people let their anger and bitter emotions separate them from righteous thoughts. Until more people visualize life as being fruitful, life for most people will continue to be critical for anger and bitter reasons, rather than suffering for the righteous victory. Is the wrath of judgment fair in most cases today? No. Jesus focused on the call that God had given him, and you should do the same no matter the cost or any obstacles you face. And you ought to be able to do it promptly, so it doesn't hinder others' dreams, goals, and success in life. Bottom line, the fear of God is meant to be clean and pure to make wise the people. When someone reads the Bible to you, you hear by faith. When you read the Bible, you visualize by sight. Either way, you do what is pure and wise. Whitewashed robes. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Revelation 7,13-15, this was after Jesus had opened the seals of the scroll. What are man-made influences? Anything cannot be visualized as a gift from God, directly or indirectly. Believing in the victory. To win a victory is an act of defeating an enemy or opponent in battle, game, or competition. It is to complete all tasks and triumph over adverse hardship. There are vows with God and vows with others, that help brings about the full essence of belief in God. Nowadays the Bible, baptism, doctrine, fellowship, and religion play key roles in righteous deliverance, and all of which is a victory in itself. When you are born again, delivered through the salvation of Jesus Christ, you adhere to the word and his wishes. You put absolute faith and trust in believing and being a witness of his experiences. And you conjugate with other believers to move forward in your walk. A victory means you accomplished what you set out to do. Completing all tasks includes fulfilling a destiny, and when you fulfill the destiny God has in store, you can impact others on a universal level. The destiny may require long-suffering or work obligations, and with population steadily increasing it can seem either may have lost its worthiness. And sure, it is about saving lives and bearing dignity to endure forever. But if you doubt long-suffering, obligations, or work you wouldn't accomplish all tasks. The struggles can be degrading and difficult but still, you keep on going. At the end of the journey, you celebrate the triumph and plan more strategic moves. When you have a clear conscience for a plan the first time, the task doesn't take as long because you are more prepared. Just a reason why you don't need distractions. Being inspired by Jesus Christ. Back in the day many people were able to visualize Jesus' value for hard work and determination. Particularly while Jesus healed the people at the pool of Bethesda, Sunday came though it was a day of rest before the change. He still honored the need to heal people and save lost souls, it was his life goal. He felt all this was a major requirement since they didn't have proper doctor care back then. They relied solely on people who could naturally heal illnesses. He knew many righteous people prior had been killed for their beliefs, however, he zealously kept going on his journeys. He thought about future generations as a healer and saver, not as a ruiner. The crucifixion, doubters, or haters never altered his righteous good works personification to be able to give God the glory in the end. Matthew 5,1-9 Worthiness the Bible urges you to acknowledge Jesus' love for the world to be worthy. And with him, you can bear a humble, lovable, renewed, and worthy soul by his grace. He acknowledged the worthiness of future generations would slowly diminish when he told the disciples to go out into the world and preach the gospel. Also, he knew death would become greater with deceit increasing. In turn, souls would be corrupt for longer periods without acknowledging the higher righteousness. This appears to be what's going on today, and re-evaluating human worthiness is needed in our society. Nowadays religious uses the quote Jesus died for our sins and this is why we are worthy. Many people go to church for years and don't feel the full impact. Either you are worthy of living sacrifices he made, or sin he committed before being put on the cross. The living sacrifices were casting out demons, healing people, and preaching the gospel. The sinful sacrifices, he made a statement where he compared himself to God and he worked on the Sabbath day. In which the Pharisees didn't believe he could cast out demons, and those actions only affirmed their disbelief in him. Still, he didn't let the accusations of the Pharisees weaken his love for the world. He wanted future generations to have life and more abundantly. So no, you aren't worthy because he died on the cross. You are worthy of the higher righteousness his ministry brought to the church's foundation, once he was resurrected from the dead. It is like a time capsule that was put on the back shelf until you are ready to utilize the worthiness. That time is now, and it is much needed than prior generations. 
it will give you more strength to empower to impact why he lived as a living sacrifice rather than, why he died as a sinful sacrifice. Jesus opened the seals. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell before the Lamb, having every one of them harps, and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seal thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Revelation 5 12 The Good Shepherd Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Matthew 10 colon 7 11 Why receiving salvation is necessary? Jesus' inheritance allowed him to be a representative of the human race, he dominates over the earth and every living thing. He set individuals free through actions and promises, his message is the current spiritual regeneration of human souls. He regarded people as his children achieving redemption from bondage taken out of hell. His atonement makes great redemption possible, also to admit when you make a mistake and to receive forgiveness. Though his authority has weakened in the world, his influence helps overcome the devil's flesh. The devil flesh within oneself is the virtual devil alive. The mind wants peace and the flesh advocates for selfless pride with gratification. Sanctification enables suppression of sin, to be made purified and holy. Salvation is made possible for human death, life, and resurrection through Jesus Christ. After playgirls accept the atonement of sin to receive salvation and deliverance, they can reconsider thoughts while sinning. Unwrapping lies will unwrap the webs of destruction, and then they can reconcile with others. All to experience Jesus Christ as Father and Savior and enable the reshaping of future generations while strengthening relationships. No one wants to remain bondage to sin a lifetime, even though it is naturally woven into every living thing. New Life in Baptism Jesus died and rose to conquer sin, at salvation a believer dies to his old sinful self and is raised to the new life in Christ. During the process of accepting salvation, Jesus Christ commanded you to get baptized as a picture of the new life. Matthew 28 19, after putting trust in him ask your pastor about receiving baptism. However, you can be baptized again and again until tadpoles know your social security number, but until you are ready to change, the change will come. God's Measure of Success He measures success in a systematic order which starts with believing, faith, forgiveness, grace, love, mercy, obedience, and respect to the biblical knowledge by how you apply it into your life. His Concerns 01. Do you acknowledge Jesus as Father and Savior? 02. Do you believe in purification? 03. Do you acknowledge changing your evil ways and remaining undefiled? 04. Will you deploy faith in righteous good works? 05. Will you forgive 70 times 70? 06. Are you a fruitful person toward others in times of need? 07. Do you know grace is formed through obedience? 08. Are you grateful for the small things to receive bigger things? 09. Are you a healer, saver, or ruiner of people's lives? 10. Do you take advantage of the innocent by exercising greed of any kind? 11. Are you a loving and kind person toward others? 12. Can you prove loyalty to him, or are you a submissive servant in the physical realm? 13. Do you acknowledge a need for mercy from his wrath of judgment? 14. Do you eat, drink and be merry in moderation? 15. Do you acknowledge by one guy's disobedience others will sin, but by one guy's obedience, others can be made righteous? 16. Do you acknowledge overcoming trial tests to stand in the yoke with Christ? 17. Do you respect the Father's image in spirit and truth? 18. Do you respect authority, parents, and elder figures? 19. Do you acknowledge his signs and wonder how to achieve accomplishments? 20. Do you tell the truth the majority of the time? 21. Do you avoid trembling in fear of waging war with disobedience? 22. Do you avoid revenge for fears of the unknown? Although authority, fruitfulness, gratefulness, healer, and savor, innocent, loyalty, moderation, overcoming, purification, righteousness, signs and wonders, thankfulness, transformation, truth, undefilement, and war also play key roles in his measure of success. 
all the above will allow you to become a trustworthy person. Jesus said, and because the iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew 24 12-13 Faith through protection. We all need faith for various reasons, but many people don't acknowledge needing faith in other circumstances that is possible to help achieve the overall victory. Valid Circumstances 01. Faith in deliverance to stand and remain, standing for the higher righteousness. 02. Faith to overcome a devil's flesh, the enemy of evil and wickedness the unjust. 03. Faith to stand for truths. 04. Faith to not accept current status, to continually overcome while transforming. 05. Faith to face fears. 06. Faith the judgment of death for me can be nullified. 07. Faith throughout financial struggles. 08. Faith through weariness. 09. Faith to overcome overeating. 10. Faith to overcome greed. 11. Faith to experience life's fullest. 12. Faith to live throughout elderly ages. 13. Faith through terror. 14. Faith to grow spiritually mature in God's word of wisdom. 15. Faith in the eternal connections God's word facilitates. 16. Faith in staying devoted. 17. Faith in obtaining an eternal destiny and mate. 18. Faith in having the courage to impact for the higher righteousness. 19. Faith in the universal natural unlimited resurrection. 20. Faith to become a victorious overcomer, in the victory through Jesus. 21. Faith to see through the dangers of empty threats to reach the higher victory. 22. Faith to overcome addictions and failure. 23. Faith to honor education, obligations, or work that comes with my destiny to avoid long sufferings. 24. Faith to feel worthy. Obedience while forming faith Faith forms a belief that isn't based on proof, it requires putting confidence and trust in someone or something. Obedience requires a submissive conscious form through righteous beliefs. Authority figures in the physical realm are the ones you deal with daily elders, parents, and police. If you engage in cowardly, evasive, or indecisive conversation with either, you wouldn't be showing a submissive conscious concerning righteous behavior. You put faith in and be obedient to authority figures to show respect, and believe what they say is true until their words contrast with God's word. You forgive them 70 times 70 if possible. And remember the need for mercy, you don't want to bring harm to your life. Destiny with direction. Destiny determines the course of events that are connected to your future, and the direction is a guide towards the destination or goal that focuses on your path. A destiny helps obtain the inheritance, whether you earn it through regular or spiritual work obligations, and often the destiny can include both. Also, it can involve a future career goal that requires education to obtain the job of your dreams. All to become financially stable or acquire riches and wealth. Though some people's sense of direction gets distorted with the semantics of adverse hardship and random notions, resulting in unbelief in God this obstacle can be overcome. Thoughts help design the course of events towards the path God has for you, and they help bring forth the fruitful spirit. Dreams and goals are possible for all believers to envision. However, you must envision destiny, direction, and inheritance with grace and truth. Through the grace of God, you are worthy of riches and wealth. Envisioning through the birth father, the destiny may not be as empowering, but envisioning through both the Father in heaven and the birth Father can increase the powers of a destiny. What is an inheritance? Property or land that comes from a family legacy, requires ownership to possess. An inheritance can also be obtained through work obligations. Living sacrifices for God. Eternal or material, agreeable to reason, rational, sacred service, but holy, and well-pleasing are structures of living sacrifices. Giving up, offering, or surrendering something, for the sake of receiving something else regardless of profit involves living sacrifices. Jesus wanted his followers to give up their worldly possessions, and when you take up a cross to follow him you will only need the necessities for now. And Jesus said, the family, house, and land his followers left behind, they shall receive it a hundredfold in the world to come, the eternal life. Matthew 19:29. he can give and take away the material earthly things, they are to be measured by his grace to reveal whether they are living or sinful sacrifices. When you commit sinful acts in eternity, you probably would be spiritually dead as an elderly person. If you don't know whether you will be righteous or where you will spend eternity, you might give up on life altogether. This can be overwhelming when you can't get a clear perception of what eternal life looks like for yourself. You have to value reaching elderly ages before you acknowledge a bigger change needs to be made. So technically, no one loses earthly things at others' expense. They are lost on behalf of God because eternal sacrifices require determination and willpower. You don't have to blame others for things lost, even if you are waiting for compensation when they weren't measured by God. Believers' material sacrifices are revealed in eternal things. While non-believers' material sacrifices are continually lost until they follow Jesus, and then they get to seek what was lost. 
This will enable you to be grateful for material eternal things measured by God. The end of Playgirl R and R not Divas.